Jay is the first person to never, ever make me feel obligated to do things. Yet, I still felt obligated anyway. Why? Because I was a people pleaser. And obligation and people pleasing are the same thing. So today, we're going to go deep into obligation. And stay tuned to the end to find out what obligation has to do with being a good person. And before I ask my first question, I'd really like to say thank you to our wonderful and amazing anonymous, mysterious <laughs> benefactor. This wonderful, amazing fan listens to our podcast every episode and he heard us talking about the lighting and he generously donated a wonderful and amazing light for us. So if you're listening on Spotify, you won't care. But all our YouTube subscribers, yay, I know you'll care and love it. Thank you. We love you. So, Jay, the holidays seem to be uh, like a big time for people to focus on obligation and they feel obligated to go to these events and blah, blah, blah. So I want to know why will people deal with family BS crap and feel obligated just to attend these events? That's a good question. Well, first, let me ask you, can you name two major things almost everybody will do anything for? Yeah, money and sex. Basically, but but not not necessarily sex, right? Like, like you just said, people will do anything for family. They feel obligated for, to family. Yes. So that's not sexual. I mean, unless you're following Pornhub's latest Okay, so then praise. Oh god. Okay, so then money and love. Yeah. And not just love exactly. It's more like because some families don't really love each other, but they don't want to lose each other. So if it's not exactly sex and it's not exactly love, it's relationships? Yeah. Okay. Connections. Connections. Yeah. Makes relationships. Sense. Yeah. Don't people all over the world through all history do almost anything for money and relationships or relationships. Yeah, I have a friend who's willing to put up with a lot of hassle and BS for family. So yeah. Yeah. So let's focus on that second one. Connections. Right. Relationships. How does obligation connect or relate to connections and relationships? Well, in my experience, in my past, the connections and relationships try to make me feel obligated to to keep me to keep me close and to do what I what what they wanted me to do. Yeah, this seems pretty common. I think most kids grow up feeling obliged by their parents and authority figures and peers and relations and feel pressured to fulfill their agenda rather than their own desires and their own heart. Yes. Yeah. Right. So most people are trained to be obligated to others. And how do they do that? How do they train you to be obligated to them? They're not giving you money, right? Right. So what are they doing to train you into obligation? Or you just wake up as a baby and you're like magically obligated or has something happened? No, they trained us. Like I, I was trained that family is everything. You drop everything, you do everything for family. There was never a reason why. But what would happen if you didn't? Like, surely you tried. Most kids are rebellious. Like, I'll just try not going to the family gathering. I'll not come out of my room or not do what the family wants. Oh, I got in trouble. Okay. I got in a lot of trouble. Right. So you got heavily punished. Yes. For not fulfilling obligations. Yes. And so what did you learn to always do? <laughs> to do whatever they wanted because I didn't want to be punished. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty common for a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of families. Yes. But- is it right? Like, is this a great way to raise children? Is this a healthy way to treat other human beings? Should we look to obligate everyone, obligate people at a young age and keep them obligated forever so they're always feeling obligated to do stuff rather than their own desires, their own heart, their own thoughts, their own dreams? No. No, not at all. But isn't that what happens? Yeah. And then we teach our kids to do the same thing because that's what we were taught. And that's what I did. Yeah. It gets passed on. Yeah. I'm sure you taught your kids to feel obligated to you. My di me, my family, the rest of the family, the sure. extended family. Why do you think I'm the only person you've ever met who doesn't oblige you to do anything mm -hmm. and wouldn't even dream of it because it runs against my philosophy? But weren't you taught the same thing? Yeah, but I broke free of it. I'm saying, I'm just saying it's rare. Right. Like It is. It is. 
But I find it interesting that even though you were taught that, you broke free and you've never, in all the time that we've been together, ever made me feel obligated about anything. Yeah. I'm grateful to be someone who's pulled that off. And I believe other people can do it also. My main point is the majority of people on earth will do almost anything to keep their connections, their relations, their support system. And it's super rare for someone not to feel obligated to do that or someone to be free of obligation in that way. Right. Yeah. I've never, I've never met anyone ever except you that didn't feel some sort of obligation to their family and their friends or their spouse and kids. Yeah. Maybe you can find this in some enlightened masters, Eckhart Tolle or Sadhguru or something like this. I don't know. Right. Jesus, Buddha, but it's pretty common. So why is it so common? Is it just because we're all trained that way? It's like an unspoken social contract. So it's so, so common that if I say to somebody, I have to go to my parents' house for dinner, the other person nine times out of 10 is like, yeah, oh, that sucks. I feel you. And they don't argue with this as an excuse because- Right, but I would say you don't have to go anywhere. Right, of course you would. You don't feel any of that and you don't ever feel obligated to go anywhere or do anything. But because it's an unspoken social contract, if I say this to anyone else, they're going to be like, oh yeah, that sucks. Yeah, well, try to have fun or something, you know, it's because it's so normalized. Sure. So it's common because we're trained that way and it's been normalized. But why do people do anything, right? We do stuff either to gain more pleasure or to avoid more pain. Right. We don't just randomly do it because it's normalized. There's tons of things that are normal that people avoid. Like, it's normal to drive, but there are plenty of people who decide not to drive because they're sick of the pain of driving and they hate the hassle, or they want the pleasure of carefree life and out of the rat race and out of traffic or whatever. But those decisions are made because they themselves find something of value in it. They don't just do it because driving is normal. So what is the pain people are avoiding by fulfilling obligations? Being, or what is the pleasure they gain by fulfilling obligations? Uh, well, the they, they avoid the pain of being alone. They avoid the pain of the argument. Right. So they avoid hard conversations and isolation, and they gain human interaction or companionship. Connections. Yeah. Connections, status in society, in the tribe. They gain a support system. It's interesting you say that. So because I have a, a friend who I who knows like I don't see my family. Like uh, I I've been here in Canada for four years now. But and, you're planning on it. Well yeah, I'm planning on it. But they kind of push this agenda on me of they try to make me actually feel bad for not seeing my kids. And I'm like, my kids are grown and have their own life. Well, yeah. And it's like if a soldier went away to war for four years, like it is what it is. You're in the trenches building a business. Like. Right. But to this person, she goes, I, she said, I could never be away from my kids for that long ever. And so she tries to put that obligation onto me, but I don't, I don't, now I don't care and I don't feel it. But the first few times she said it bothered me. I felt bad. And I, I tried to find a way to fix this and it like to for someone else it was so stupid yeah well you can just say like i'm out here trying to make a great life for my kids it's going to take a few years so, yeah i don't know well the thing is my kids have passports airplanes go both ways like they could come see me anytime they don't either so why does it the obligation fall to me yeah well you probably felt bad those first few times it was mentioned because you felt like you were losing your support system mm -hmm. yeah if i do this I'm going to lose my family. Yes. But anyone who you lose because you made a decision to fulfill your life or follow your dreams or skip a party or whatever, if you lose someone because of that. Did you really lose? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. And, and we are so, we are mother and child. We are bonded. Even when they ask for space, they still message, you know, like even when we're not really talking, they still share things like, we are bonded for life because they came from my body and they neither of us can change that. And, and we talk and we love each other. That doesn't go away. So 
you're right. Like I can't lose my support system. Yeah. Well, you've hit right on the whole thing. So our, is a human being's true support system something external, like the land they're on or the country they're in or the society they're with or the skills they have or whatever? Or is their true support system something internal? It's internal. Because humanity's true support system is internal, you can toss a human being into like almost any situation and they will figure out a way to thrive and adapt yes. if they rely on their internal support systems. Right. If they don't panic and get all crazy and like, oh, I have no external support system, blah, blah, blah. So for anyone who understands that our true support systems are internal mm -hmm. and we don't have to fulfill obligations because you won't lose any external support system, it doesn't even matter if you do, these people are free to not be obligated to anyone or anything. Right. Yes. They rely on themselves and their internal support system and they don't care what life throws at them and they know they're going to adapt no matter what. These are legendary badasses and they're quite rare. Right. But they exist. Yes. All the rest of the people who believe in external support systems, I, I'm desperate. I need money. I couldn't possibly be homeless. I couldn't possibly let go of my family or support system. I couldn't, I couldn't do any of these things. They are limited. They are imprisoned. They are not free to do much. They have to fulfill a million obligations mm -hmm. constantly because they're so worried about losing their connections, even though there's 8 billion people on earth and they could make new connections. Someone with an internal support system is like, eh, I can let anyone go. If someone's meant to be with me, they're going to come back. They're going to stay. Life will bring them back. And if they're not meant to be with me, they're free to go their own path and I will form new connections. Yeah. I have an yeah. internal support system. I'm a lovable person. I believe in myself. I'm okay with this. I don't need to manipulate people. I don't need to cling to connections. I don't need to chase all these obligations. I'm going to do what I love to do and follow my dreams and the right people will come to me. You see, someone with an internal support system doesn't have any issues with obligations. But someone with an external support system or someone who believes in an external support system and ignores their internal support system, they're going to get what? Tons of obligations. Oh, yeah. They're going to just feel obligated at every everything, everything and anything. Yeah. Uh, well, this makes a lot of sense and also helps me to understand another friend of mine who has been like going through it about not having family, like has separated herself from family for reasons that she wants to change. But sure. Can't but and is blah, she blah. hyper focused on external yes. support systems? Yes. And is she afraid of losing the external support yes. systems? And does she believe in her internal support system? No. Does she believe she can make new connections and start no. a new family? No. So there you go. Like, she's going to feel obligated nonstop, for, constantly, and she's going to go do a bunch of random shit to fulfill those obligations. Yeah. 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 But you put her beside some someone else, like I described, some of these badass legends, mm -hmm. and they'll just be like, it's going to be one hell of a story for my biography. I'm off to follow my dreams and do yeah. what I want. Yes. Yeah. And you know, me leaving... Florida to come follow my dreams here and, and build something with you actually made me closer to my mother. My mother has made a lot of changes and she's been super supportive recently, especially, uh, and she's been so much different. But I think because of this, because I started to focus on the internal support system that I have, I let go of the obligation of I should do this. I have to do this and just did the things the way I do it and let people make fun of me or talk crap about me or whatever they want. And then things feel better and smoother and easier than they have in, in a long time. Yeah. When you follow your inner guidance and your true heart and your real dreams, it's funny how that happens. Things tend to work <laughs> out. Yes. Yeah. Weird. It takes courage, but it always works. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you. You are awesome. So I can kind of understand why some people feel obligated to family and people were related to, right? I have felt obligated intensely to my family. But it's very interesting how I can also feel in the past obligated to friends and people I'm not related to and people that I barely know. So, and I recently have dealt with this. So why would I feel obligated to a friend of mine that I've known for less than a year who has never given me what my family has? Well, what did we agree are two major things most of the population will do anything for? Money and relationships. Yes. Yeah. Or connections. Yeah. Right. I use the term connections. You might prefer relationships, but the point stands. Money and connections. 
right? Yes. So you tell me, why would you feel obligated to this person? Is it for money? No. So then? Connections. Yeah. And so? But I have a million friends. Here? No, not in Toronto. So what will you feel like in your heart about your connections? You'll think, I only have one connection in this neighborhood or whatever, or I have three or four or whatever. Right. This is a quarter of them. This is 25% of my neighborhood connection. Okay. I've thought before because I, I lost one of these, but I ended a friendship last year with a, a mutual friend. We both ended the friendship. And so I've had that thought before, like we're similar in age, we're similar in like some of the things we enjoy doing. So yeah, I can see maybe I've thought that before, like, I don't want to lose my only friend, even though she's not my only friend. Whatever. But... You can justify it <laughs> or think about it however you want. But right? the truth is, deep in your gut somewhere, you're like, this is a rare, precious connection, mm -hmm. and I can't possibly let go of it. Where else will I find an external support system like this, a friend like this, a person like this, right? <laughs> it's scarcity thinking. It is. And she's honestly the only person I've ever met that picked me up as a friend. In fact, I thought she was kind of aggressive about the friendship in the beginning. I thought she was like a lesbian and she was interested in a relationship, but then she made it clear that she wasn't. And I've never had a friend pursue me to be my friend before like that. That's why I guess I felt a little like I felt more obligated and held on a little bit more because no one's ever pursued me to be my friend like this before and didn't ask for anything in return. So that's why maybe, yeah. Sure. But like friends or family, why are people feeling obligated? Because of fear. Yeah. They're afraid of losing what? Their connection. Exactly. Yeah. People people find it easy to spot someone who's afraid of losing money. So they're cheap. They're stingy. They're scared of mm -hmm. losing money. I can tell they're just making that decision for money. That company just wants more money. It's very easy to spot. But for some reason, people can't see when others are doing something just for the connection because they're afraid of losing the connection. Yeah. But, but once you wake up to it, you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get why they're doing it. They're afraid of losing their connections. Oh, I know why they're going to that gathering. They're afraid of losing connections. Oh, I know why they're waking up at X time. They're afraid of losing connections. I know why they're answering the phone. They're afraid of losing connections. Why are all these people doing all these weird things that they seem to hate? So they're afraid of losing their connection. That makes sense. So our friend that went to a holiday gathering around her family, even though she didn't want to be there because she was afraid to lose those connections. Yeah. Or lose other other related connections. Yes. Okay. All right. This makes sense. Right. If I refuse to go to a funeral because they bring me down or I want to work or I don't like them or I woke up on the wrong side of the bed or I don't feel like it or I just want to rest or I want self-care or a million other reasons, do I lose the whole family? I mean... Yeah. I lose a huge chunk of the family, right? Yeah. They talk about me behind my back. They are like, he's the black sheep. I don't know what he's, what he's thinking. He's so selfish. He's so arrogant. I don't know why he's not coming to the funeral. He has no respect for the family or the dead or whoever. Yeah. But there's zero consideration for me or my decisions or my feelings or me following my life path. It is just trash talk. Just pure trash talk because of my decision. Okay, but then why do they do that? So like when my cousin died, there was an another cousin who didn't go for whatever reasons i don't know and it was the same situation yeah and you got to be on the other side of it and you had to hear all the trash yeah talk. and i kept quiet because to me i thought the cousin who didn't come had a life and kids and like he was across the country and stuff and so to me i understood but i just zipped my lip and said nothing so why well, because he's not playing the obligation game and he's the one enjoying his life at home and they're all they're all at the funeral they didn't want to be at None of them wanted to be there. Do you think it's part of it is a jealousy thing? Yeah, they all wanted the freedom to do the same thing. But my point is he had to be okay with losing the family connections. Maybe one person stays on his side and the other like 90 disappear. Yes, that's what happened. For one funeral. Yeah, that's what happened. Right, but, but if he believes in his own internal support system and he does not fiend for external support systems, constantly obsessed with them and worried about losing them, then he'll just find new ones. He's just going to be fine. He's just going to be badass and be like, well, I didn't need those trash talking shamers anyways. And I'm going to go find my own fan, start my own fan, whatever. Yeah. And I bet you that's what he did. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I bet you he also doesn't trash talk people who skip funerals. I, I keep myself out of that whole thing. But but yeah, it, it makes sense. Okay. So so the, the reason why I have held on longer than I normally would have is because I didn't want to lose this connection and my only friend in Toronto. Yeah, but could you admit that to yourself? No. I mean, no. you can now. Obviously. I can now. I don't. But now if, you I'm can't, like, if you can't admit it to yourself, it's going to show up as fulfilling people's obligation. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Right. So if you go talk to someone and they're telling you some story of doing something that they didn't want to do just to please somebody mm-hmm. and you see and you clearly see they're just fulfilling obligations, they could honestly admit, I'm afraid of losing these connections. I don't want to make new connections and go off on my own. I'm scared of what will happen. I don't really trust myself. I can't rely on my own internal support systems. I'm always relying on external support systems. And so I feel obligated. Or they could just say, I have to do it. You know how it is. Yeah. Which one's more self-aware? Which one is the truth? Which one is correct? Which one would you expect them to say? Well, I would actually expect them to say, well, you know how it is. But right. the the other thing, that, like saying I'm going to do my own thing, this is what we should all be saying. <laughs> this, is what, this is what feels good to us. The, the first, the, we met in, in November of 2018. And in December, uh, I was living in New York City and I was close to my family who for most of my life have done a huge family Christmas and I haven't been a part of very many. And so I told you, I don't really know if I want to go. I don't feel like going. And we had a whole conversation about obligation. It was one of the first few things. And you said, well, do whatever feels best. And so I thought about it. I was like, okay, I don't know yet. I'll let you know what I decide. And then I felt it through and I thought it through. And I thought I could say, I could stay home and say no. I've always wanted to be a part of that because I was always in Florida and they were in, up north. I'm going to go. And, and but, but before that conversation, I was going to go out of obligation. When I finally chose to go, it was because yeah, I really do want to go. I'm going. Yeah. Same thing for a funeral. Yeah. Going to a funeral because you feel obligated and the family's bullying you into it and they're going to shame you and trash talk you. Lame. Yeah. Going because you know what? This time for this funeral, for this person, it feels like the right thing to do. And I really want to do that. Yes. Great. Fantastic. Do what you love. I fully support it. So that's your choice with everything. Job out of obligation or job because it's a passion project you really want to do. Funeral out of obligation or funeral because you really feel like your presence matters there. And you're, that's where you're going to devote your time today. Right? Like, these are your choices. Yeah. And um, when I chose to go to the funeral... I went because I felt like I had to be there. Not not for other people, but for me. Great. And so I stayed a month after the funeral a little longer than should have. That was out of obligation. But but yeah, like the more I make choices to go places and do things because I really want to do them, the better it is. I have a better time. I had the best time at that Christmas. I really had a wonderful time because I chose to go for me. So yeah, this is wonderful. This is one of the things that I have. I'm so grateful for you. It's those first lessons have always, they stick out because they were the first time I've ever heard someone say, don't go somewhere out of obligation. You don't have to go. And I was like, whoa, wait, I don't have to go. Yeah. It's funny. People are free individuals who are allowed to do anything they want, period. Now there will be consequences. But it's interesting as an Amer- as an American, we are like they in like push this on us as we are free. We're the home of the brave and land of the free or whatever. And like you have freedoms and you are free and you're free. But I didn't ever feel it. But you know what the freest choice is? You are free to be obligated to others if you want. And you are free to break those obligations if you want. Choice is yours. So Everyone who feels obligated and doesn't feel free and feels imprisoned and shackled and held down and repressed, whose choice is that? They're free to break those obligations at any time. They're free to trust their internal support system instead of chasing their external support system. That's a free choice you can make any time. Scary. It takes courage. You don't know what's going to happen. It feels like free fall. It feels like falling off a cliff. It's super scary. No one wants to take the plunge. But every legend who's ever tried it 
ends up free and badass and baller. True. I think that was like a great sound bite. That whole thing you just said, that'd be awesome to share on socials because it's true. I think uh, a lot of people don't understand what the word freedom actually means. We're told, especially not here in Canada, but in America, this is something that's repeated to us on a constant basis about how free we are, but we're not. But we could be at any time. Thank you for helping me break free of obligation. My pleasure. I love you. It's the only way to live. Okay, Jay. So thank you so much. So one of the things that I noticed in my research was that obligation is like scorekeeping, right? Keeping score of what you did for me and what you took score of what I did for you, blah, 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 right? So, and scorekeeping is supposed to be a bad thing in relationships. So what if I only keep a score of the good things you do? Well, let's play that out, right? Okay. You keep score of all the good things I do. And there's like 50, like 500, just an insane amount of good things that I have done, right? Right. And then you or I or both of us keep score of the good things you do. And there's two or three. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Smarty pants. For sake of example. Uh, for sake of example. You're the worst. But seriously, like any two people, not us, if you keep yeah. score and there's 50 good things on one side and two good things on the other, now we've done what you've asked. We've kept track of all the good things. Right. What happens? Okay. I, you're, you've already made your point without even saying anything else. So if, I, if you have a scorecard of I've had two things that are good, which... They'd be way more, but yeah. Hey. But if there were, <laughs> then I feel obligated to do more good things to even the score more than I'm. I'm not doing it out of the goodness of my heart anymore. Yeah, you're back to obligation again, just by keeping Even's... score at all. <laughs> okay. And how do I feel? How does the person with two feel? You feel crappy. Yeah, and I feel really desperate to do what more. And then the person with the the higher score, the 50, sits back and, and feels like they don't have to do anything now. Now I can be a jerk. I can be rude because, uh, look, I, there's 50 on her scorecard. I'm, she, I did 50 great things, but she's only done two. Screw her. I'm going to do nothing now. Instead, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to be yeah. rude and mean now because, look, I have a scorecard of good crap. Yeah, so is this a great human being? Is this a great attitude? Is this how you want to treat other people? I really thought I had you. Okay. That, no, it makes sense. It makes it makes a lot of sense. I didn't think of it this way. But the yeah. thing is, as soon as you're keeping score <laughs> and not like following your own internal guidance, and instead you're counting external things and trying to keep score, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's automatic obligation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not a good thing. This is not a good thing at all. So... If you're listening or watching Rise Rebels and you silently, quietly keep score, even if it's the good things your partner does, you're still keeping score. Don't do it. And I want to know, please let me know in the comments what you think. Do you keep score quietly, silently? I used to in, in my former relationship. I definitely did that. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard me talk about the trash can. And how he wouldn't empty the trash. And I would keep score. I definitely kept score of how many times he emptied the trash. How many times I had to argue. How many times we had to yell. But I've also done the opposite. How many times I did good things. How many times I cleaned up after him. How many times I, you know, made dinner or cleaned up or whatever, whatever. And it doesn't matter. They're, they're both not okay. So, yeah. Like, I did it. If you do it, I'd love to know. And also, I'd love for you to share how you're going to not keep score, right? So I have a, a question for that, for, about that. So how do we go from, because sometimes that stuff is like becomes a habit to keep score in my head. How can we stop that so we don't end up back to obligation? I mean, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> okay, maybe but, like one little idea for us right now. Well, the main thing is who chooses your focus in life? Oh, me. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Right. Even if there's a lot of loud music outside, you can choose to focus on your stuffed animals or whatever. Sure. Or get headphones or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So when things happen, you can choose to focus on following your internal guidance, doing what feels right to you, being as loving as you can, contributing to others as much as you can, setting boundaries whenever it feels right to you. 
or you can focus on keeping score. Can anyone focus on two things at once? No. Because focus means... You're on one thing. Right. You're paying attention to one thing. Right. But you're right. Like, when you turn your focus onto one thing, it is literally impossible to hear or see or pay attention to the thing going on around if you're really focused. Right. So a person is either focused on keeping score or they're focused on being a loving human, contributing their best they can, setting boundaries when they want and when it's necessary and moving through life with mature emotions and respect, right? Like, Yeah, it's true. So I've met both of these kinds of people. They exist. And I've even been one who transitioned from one to the other. And so that's that's everyone's choice. You can focus on score or focus on other things, like being a great person mm-hmm. and setting boundaries and stepping away from people who you don't feel you resonate with. Like, that's it. You just focus on whichever. And if you keep focusing on the score, mm-hmm. who can help you, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. So now we know we are focusing on the thing and not focusing on being obligated or keeping score or any of that crap because that is not who we want to be anymore. Yeah, we focus on following our internal guidance and doing what feels best and most fulfilling to us. Yay! Yeah. It takes practice. Yes. Most people aren't doing it. Yes, agreed. But we can all do it more. So I I have another question though. What if I feel obligated to talk about my book, Eyes Wide Open, Volume 1. It's the world's first self-help coffee table book. And it's free for you in a PDF form. Go to eyeswideopenfree.com. And we also have our workbook that goes with it. And that is available to you at eyeswideopenfree.com slash handbook. Why did I make the handbook? Because we can't physically be there to help you hold your hand through the book, but we made the handbook so we can be with you, kind of, and help you through the book by asking some amazing questions. And if you like quizzes, you'll love our handbook. Now I'm not obligated because the ad's over. Love you. So Jay, most people feel obligated towards family, and jobs and uh, making money and paying bills and feeding the kids. I mean, we have to feed kids if you have them, feed them. But how can we break free of the feeling of obligation? And what if I feel responsible for doing the thing that I have to do? Is that the same thing as obligation? Oh, that's a good question. It kind of relates back to what I said earlier about freedom and breaking the chains of obligations or choosing choosing them because how can anyone be free when they have pressure hanging over their head to do something that they don't want to do you can't you cannot feel free when you have that feeling over you right but are you free when you can tell a king to screw off you can tell anybody to screw off you can be uh whoever and however you want to be be whatever shape you want to be live whatever life you want to be choose whatever job you want to be without caring about people's opinions or interactions or connections, right? Like if you are comfortable being yourself and you don't care if you lose connections and you're confident you'll make new ones out of the 8 billion people on planet Earth, are you then free? Yes. And so are you free to be someone who keeps their word or someone who breaks their word? Yeah, you're free to to do either. Right. So if I'm free and I can be a word breaker or a word keeper, What does that mean for obligation and responsibility? Well, I choose to feel responsible. I choose to feel obligated. So I'm not free because I choose to feel that way about whatever it is I'm doing. Yeah. Are there some orphans who grew up to be truly amazing people because of their orphan experience? Yes. So a lot of people would criticize those parents for not being responsible for their child. But If the child grows up and becomes an incredible human being, just next level, and they say they owe it all to the orphan experience, was it really irresponsible for those parents? Or were they doing the right thing? I guess they were doing the right thing. I mean, you can't really tell by results, but it's food for thought, right? Like, So before you continue, I want to give more to my answer, right? 
So they, if, if a parent gives their child up for adoption, they may f- do it because they know it's best for their child because they can't give the child what they want. And a lot of people will keep a child out of obligation because it's their child. I saw a homeless man on the street yesterday with a child like that was the dirtiest poor little thing I ever saw in my life. And I'm like if if they had, I mean, I don't know the situation or anything. I'm just assuming for the example. But but if he had given up the child, this would be more freedom. And he felt would feel more like I want what's best for my kid. So I'm going to give it up regardless of how it makes me feel. Right. My point is, everyone gets to choose whether they're going to be a word keeper or a word breaker overall and in every individual situation. Right. So if I choose to be a word keeper, what does that mean about my responsibilities? Right. So if I feel responsible to do a good job washing the dishes, as a word keeper, if I miss a spot or I have to redo a dish, I'll still feel free by going back and doing that because it keeps my word. Like I chose to be a word keeper overall and in this situation. And so when I keep my word and rewash those dishes, I still feel free because it was not obligation. It was all up to me. Right. On the other hand, if I choose to be a word keeper and over promise something or tell somebody I do something that I really didn't want to do or my feelings changed along the way? Am I going to feel free by keeping my word to this shitty obligation? No. Well, I don't know. Like on the one hand, (laughs) on the one hand, if I go do it, I'll be proud of myself. I kept my word. Right. On the other hand, if I say, you know what? My feelings have changed. I don't try to be wishy-washy and I wasn't trying to steer you wrong and I'm ready to make amends or pay a penalty or do something to make this better, but I can't go through with this action. It wouldn't be right to myself. Then I'll also feel free because even though I'm a word keeper overall, I fessed up to my mistake. I owned it. I'm ready to pay the consequences, but I'm not going to go do some obligation that makes it even worse. Like when I, when I quit Evan. Yeah. 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 When you quit working for Evan. Yeah. So, so in every moment with every obligation or responsibility that comes our way, we're put in a position of choosing freedom and doing what's right in our heart or choosing to give in to something else, right? Maybe fulfilling the obligation feels right and is the correct thing to do. And I won't make a habit of it and I don't really like doing obligatory things, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to do this one to be the free-willed word keeper that I chose to be. Or maybe I have to back out gracefully and say I'm not going to do this obligation in order to be the free will word keeper that I chose to be, like to myself. Yes. So there's no like rule about this. It's individual for every person in every individual circumstance. But it's something we can all feel and we can all sort out and we can all experiment with and figure out for ourselves. Maybe you make mistakes and you do accept an obligation or you don't choose the free will option that makes you feel happy. And then you learn next time I won't do that and so on and so forth, right? You can hone your skills at this. You can practice this. And everyone has their own instinct initially anyways. They have an instinct about whether they should take the obligation or ditch it. Right. They have an instinct whether they should step up to the responsibility or let the responsibility go. Yeah. And that instinct might be wrong, but it's a starting point. Right. If you try it and it's wrong, then you learn better next time. Fair play. Yeah. You have to start the journey, though. You got to start practicing. You got (laughs) to listen to that instinct, try it, and see what happens. So, so to me, really, it all works out if we're all just obligated to ourselves. Like we're responsible to the impulses from our inner guidance. We're responsible to the impulses of our heart, and we do the things that are scary in order to learn and refine our instincts and our intuition and our guidance. You can't refine anything if you don't actually give it a shot. If you just sit there thinking it through and ignoring your heart and doing what people say and whatever, then it never gets practice. You'll never refine that skill. So it has to start somewhere. And we all have that little impulse calling us, right? Yeah. You just turn this whole thing around. Like, so, all right. He said, you guys heard him. You don't be obligated to anyone else outside us. We're not obligated to our friends, our family, jobs, blah, 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 all this crap, right? 
but we are obligated to ourselves. We are obligated to do what feels best to us, to follow our internal guidance. And that is amazing. That is beautiful. And it's true because recently I started feeling obligated to following my instinct, my gut, my feeling inside, as you know. And this was a game changer. This has been next level learning and leveling up. As soon as I started like feeling obligated towards me, everything changed. Oh my God. I love when you, this is great. Okay. Obligation to others is wrong, bad, don't do. Obligation to ourselves and what we truly want deep down inside. This is what we should, we should be obligated to. Yeah. And it's amazing. It'll give you a blissful life. You may need a new title. You are supposed to be obligated, but not to the people you think. We can change the headline. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just saying, I'm like, this This is great. I came into this. The headline can be, you are obligated always to this. There you go. That's a good one. Well, anyway, I came into this episode thinking that we were going to talk about obligation in a different way, like how we, how we started. And now I'm like on a whole nother, wait a minute, we have to be obligated to ourselves. And this makes total sense for me. Especially lately, the last this the, this whole month uh, in the new year, I have felt completely different. I've been like doing whatever felt best for me, and and it's wonderful. And and I feel obligated to continue to do it, but it feels good. It feels right. It feels correct. So, oh my God, yay! Thank you so much. You are the best. I love you. Oh my God. So sometimes obligation is seen as having high morals. If we do the thing that other people obligate us to, then we're good people, right? So, I mean, I don't agree with this, but other people see this. Can we still be seen as having high morals, good morals and values, if we follow our internal guidance and forget about obligation? Can we still be seen as a good person? That is a great question. Now we're digging deep. I love it. Give me these uh, like abstract philosophical questions. Yeah, let's do it. Well, to make it easy and simple and practical and clear, how about I give you two super extreme examples that would never happen, but will set the groundwork for understanding this. Okay. Okay. The first example is, well, well, which would you rather have? A world where everyone is doing everything out of obligation. They are doing things they don't really want to do just to avoid punishment or not to lose connections. And they're obsessed with external things, external support systems. They don't trust their own internal support system and they just want to look good to everybody else, right? Right. World one. Right. Or a world where that stuff is replaced by doing what's in every individual's heart. It's a world where everyone sees us all as one. We know we're all connected. We know we're all one giant human race rising together. And we know that When each of us follows what's in our hearts, it's like a cell in a body performing its correct function and the whole civilization thrives. They know that no one should ever do anything they don't want to do out of obligation. We should find a solution around it. We should find a way around it. We should uh, let them go do their thing or set a boundary with them and distance ourselves. If they want to be a hermit, let them. If they want to disconnect from society, let them. But let everyone do what they want to do with no obligation. It is all done out of love, all done out of following their hearts and their instincts. Even if they do the wrong thing sometimes, they're just learning. They're like, oh, this didn't work out. I I should listen to my heart differently next time or clearer next time. And voila, right? That's world two, zero obligation. So the first world is 100% obligation. That's how everyone's doing everything. It's all laws and avoiding punishment and looking good with others. Right. And world two is everyone doing everything out of love and their heart and their instincts and their intuition. And there is zero obligation to anyone and everyone's cool with that. To me, which world would you prefer? To me, I would prefer the second one. I want everyone to do whatever feels best to them. I want them to do the obligation for themselves. Be obligated to yourself. Do what feels best. Do what feels good in your heart and your soul. And actually, doing that makes you a good person. Sure. Both of these worlds are extreme 
ideals that sure, probably will never exist. Yes, that's a but utopia I'm, that I know is not going to happen. Or a dystopia. Or di- yes. If the other one. True, fair play. Everyone doing everything out of yeah, obligation. No. That sounds like a nightmare. Yes, Gross. I know. But I don't know. Maybe some people prefer it. My point is I want to know why. Why do you prefer World 2? Oh, because this is, feels the best for me. I spent many years in obligation land doing the obligating things, whatever everyone wanted me to do it, being the good daughter and, and mother and friend and you know cousin and whatever. And now I'm in the other world and land of me, you know, I mean, basically it's not the utopia I'd like because not everyone's doing it. I feel better. I'm happier. I'm thriving. I It makes me want to do more for people because I'm happier. I'm thriving. So I want to uh, help more people. I want to do more things. I want to lift other people up. I want to make the world better. I want people to be as happy as I am. But I couldn't, in, in obligation world, I didn't want to do that for anybody. I, well, you weren't happy. No. Why the hell would I want to help anyone else? Yeah. Everyone was telling you to do things that made you unhappy. Yes funny when you do things that make you happy that happiness is contagious <laughs> when you do a bunch of things that are obligations and they make you unhappy you don't really feel like spreading that happiness around no i wanted to burn everything to the ground right so what i'm getting at is which of these worlds would you call morally good the unobligated world yeah the love world the do what you feel world the yes. i don't judge you the you're free to do as you like world yes. again it's some crazy ideal that is not practical and probably not going to happen or whatever but you can kind of see what the ideal situation is, like what we should be aiming for. So morals are things that we're we're meant to be aiming for. Yes. So should we be aiming for, in our lives, more obligation and more avoiding punishment and more keeping desperately connections around? Or should we be aiming for doing what we love and damn the consequences and I'll make new connections if I have? Obligation world sounds ew and gross and no. And lovely, love, unfettered, free world. free world feels amazing and beautiful and wonderful. And while I know these worlds don't exist, I would love to invest in that world and be a part of that world and, and live there. Right. So which is morally good? Being obligated or being free? Being free. Being so free. you asked which is morally good. Mm-hmm. But. If most of the world lives in obligation land and that's how they think and that's how they feel and that's how they believe. And if you don't do what they've obligated you to do, they go ballistic and they go bananas and they shame you left and right. Can you look good to them? No. Can you look morally good to those people? No. Right. No. At least not not if you're being free and following your heart. If you're following their obligations, you can look great. So what is more important to you? Looking great to a bunch of people who play the obligation game? Or being free and doing what you love and being happy and spreading that happiness as best you can. Oh, definitely not caring. Let, let them think whatever they want and call me immoral and stupid and laugh at me and whatever. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Sure. So your question, can we be morally good by ditching obligations? And then can we be seen as morally good by ditching obligations? Yeah, but I guess it depends on who you're looking. Because to you, I am a moral person. I'm now, a I'll great praise person. You, I'll praise you up and down for doing what's in your heart, yeah. no matter the consequences. That's yes. badass. That's baller. I'm proud of you. And I don't care what it is. I don't even care if it's ditch me. I just, I will praise you for doing what feels freest and most fulfilling to you. We need more people like that. I love it. Yeah. And you can quote me on this, like you ever leave or whatever, just, just put this in front. Like you said, anything that makes me happy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'll back it up. I'll, I'll stand by it. Uh, you've shown me this so many times, yes. Right. So if I'm looking, you will look morally good for standing up and doing what's in your heart. Yeah. But to a bunch of people from the old paradigm who think they're obligated to everyone and they have to go to the family gatherings and you do too. And if you don't play their game, they get all hissy fit and whatever. Mm-hmm. Are you going to look good to them? No. Right. No. If you want to look good to them, what do you have to do? Be obligated again. Do yep. the thing they want me to do. Yep. Go against my true feelings inside yep. and make them happy. Yep. you got to repress yourself and be what they want. Yes. And that's the choice everyone has. It's super common. That's, that's amazing. I mean, what I mean is your answer was amazing. I never thought of it that way. And it's true. So I had a conversation with someone in my past yesterday who laughed at me and who made fun of me and didn't understand why I'm here. And like still all these years later, still throwing judgment at me. And 
I was so chill. I was like, yeah, I don't care. I didn't get mad. I didn't get upset because I don't care how this person who, who lives their life in massive obligation and feeling like they have to do what everyone else wants and says, I could give two turds what they thought of me. I know what you cheer for. Your booze mean nothing. Thanks. But it's true. So it makes total sense. You are amazing. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. You really helped me understand obligation more today and how to look at like wanting to be a moral person and a good person with good values. It really doesn't depend on me. It depends on the person viewing me and me viewing myself through their eyes. Because I really don't care if they see me as immoral for being here or doing what I love. But you used to. I used to very much. And I used to make choices to make other people happy all the time. To not even, lose your connections. To not lose my connections. Even when they weren't looking and they weren't there to see what I was doing and they had no idea. I still made a lot of choices because in my mind, they knew. Just ridiculous. So, oh my God. Thank you so much. I feel like I leveled up a little bit even more. So you're the best. You're the best. Thank you so much for your time and your energy and your connection that we have together and that we have with our wonderful audience. So I just have one more question. Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with said amazing audience? Yes. Amazing audience. Rise Rebels. Nearly everyone feels obligated sometimes. It's fine. It's natural. But you'll win at life more the more you replace those obligations with doing what you really love on the small things or the big. And it takes courage and it takes practice. And there will be consequences and you may lose connections. But rest assured, there are 8 billion people on earth and you are a valuable one of them. You will absolutely make more better connections. If you're someone who's shackled by hundreds of obligations, I guarantee your life will be better if you reduce some of those. But it takes boundary setting. It takes self-awareness. It takes discipline. It takes focus. But I believe you have all that. And you'll prove it to yourself when you take a firm stand against your first bullshit obligation. Try it today. You'll love it. I believe in you. That was so good. Thank you. And that's why our book and this podcast are called Eyes Wide Open. After today, you'll know how to navigate obligation and what kind of obligation is really best for you. And now you can go to see this video here. It's called <laughs> People Pleasers Are Abusers to help you keep your eyes wide open. Keep rising.